21, and the verses were 4 through 7. And it is from that passage of scripture that I would like to draw upon the blackboards of your minds and preach from the subject, Jehoram, our example on how not to live. Jehoram, our example on how not to live. Who is Jehoram? Well, if we were to look in the Bible and look up this person by the name of Jehoram that we read about on this morning in 2 Chronicles chapter 21, we will find out that he is the fifth king of the southern kingdom, which is known as Judah. That means that if we begin to count the kings from Rehoboam, we will count down five kings and we will get to Jehoram. He was a descendant of King David, who was a good king king of Israel. He was also the son of King Jehoshaphat, who was also identified as a good king. He was the grandson of King Asa of Judah, who was also a good king. Jehoram was a wicked king who had six brothers put to death. But not only that, he practiced idolatry. And so when we look at the life of King Jehoram, I see three things from his life that no person, especially a Christian, ought to imitate. PowerPoint number one is this. We learn from Jehoram how not to treat family. We learn from Jehoram how not to treat family. Jehoram learned nothing from his parents. He learned nothing from his parents. And we read about this in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 31 and 32, because again, Jehoram's father was a man by the name of Jehoshaphat, who was a good king. Now think about his grandfather and father for a moment. Both Asa and Jehoshaphat were considered good kings of Judah. And they weren't considered good kings because the people liked them. They weren't considered good kings because the nation loved them. But rather, they were considered good kings because God called them good kings. The Bible tells us in 2 Chronicles chapter 14, verse 2, that Asa did what was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. And in 2 Chronicles chapter 17, verse 3 and 4, the Lord was with Jehoram's father, Jehoshaphat. And the reason why God was with Jehoshaphat is because Jehoshaphat walked in the earlier ways of his father, David. How did he walk in the earlier ways of his father, David? He did not seek the bells. And he also sought the God of his fathers and walked in the commandments of God and not according to the practices of Israel. Jehoram learned nothing from his father Jehoshaphat and he learned nothing from his grandfather Asa and he learned nothing from his ancestor David. All who were considered good and great and righteous kings. So what does that mean for us today? Well, when it comes to our parents, when it comes to our parents, when it comes to our parents, the Bible tells us that we must obey them and honor them. And the way we obey them and honor them is by learning from them. Listen to your Bible as we go to Ephesians chapter 6 and the verses are 1, 2, and 3. In Ephesians chapter 6, and the verses are 1, 2, and 3. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1, 2, and 3, the Bible reads, Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Why must we obey our parents in the Lord? Because the Lord says, this is right. The Bible goes on to say, to honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with the promise. Why must we honor our mother and father? Because that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. 
Jehoram did not do this. And he only reigned for eight years. Not only that, Jehoram went a step further. Not only did he disobey Jehoshaphat, disobey Asa, but the Bible tells us that he killed his brothers and extended family out of fear and jealousy. And we read about this in 2 Chronicles chapter 21, verse 4. Now there's something that we need to understand about the instability of monarchies. Throughout history, when it comes to monarchies, if anyone, and I do mean if anyone, had a legitimate claim to the throne and became a threat to the sitting king, then the monarch would eliminate the competition in order to establish his reign as king or queen. Now, there is nothing in the text that would suggest that Jehoram's brothers wanted the throne. Even though the prophet Elijah tells us in 2 Chronicles chapter 21, verse 13, that the only reason why Jehoram was king is because he was the firstborn. But Elijah says that all of his baby brothers were more qualified to lead Judah than he was. Yet, they were not trying to take the throne. Because when Jehoshaphat died, what Jehoshaphat did is that he gave gifts to all of his sons. He gave them gold, he gave them silver, he gave them valuable possessions, and not only that, he gave them all fortified cities so that they would not seek the kingdom and be jealous of Jehoram. But here it is, Jehoshaphat gives Jehoram the kingdom and Jehoram is jealous of his brothers, even though he received the greater gift. And so I want us to understand that even though he was the firstborn, we need to recognize that when a person is insecure in who they are and what they have, then nothing will be good enough for them. And that was Jehoram's problem. And so when we look at the life of Jehoram, what does that mean for us today? Well, when it comes to our family, whether biological or spiritual, we must not only learn from our parents, but we need to learn to love one another. Listen to your Bible. In 1 John, the chapter is 3, and the verses are 11 through 15. 1 John, the chapter is 3. And the verses are 11 through 15. Hear what thus saith the Lord. The book says, For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. We should not be like Cain, who was of the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own deeds were evil and his brothers righteous. Do not be surprised, brothers, that the world hates you. We know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brothers. Whoever does not love abides in death. And everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. And so when we look at the life of Jehoram, he learned nothing from his parents. He hated his brothers. He killed them. And also something else. Jehoram married somebody who didn't know God. Jehoram married somebody who didn't know God. And we see that in 2 Chronicles chapter 21, verse 6. Now, one of the things that should motivate who we marry and how we treat our spouses is whether they have a relationship with God. I mean, if I marry, then I have married another human being who was made in the image of of Almighty God. And so to mistreat this person in any way is to mistreat a soul that Jesus thought enough of 
to die for. But let me go a step further. Let's say that I marry a Christian. Then why risk mistreating the child of the creator of the universe? I mean, if we mistreat God's child, then we are going to have to deal with that child's heavenly father. And I don't think anybody is bold enough to say, you know what, I'm going to stop. I wish God would. I don't think anybody is brave enough to say anything like that. But then let me take it a step further. If I marry a non-Christian, then I'm going to have to also deal with my new father-in-law. And if God is not that person's father, then that makes the devil that person's father, according to John chapter 8, verse 44. And we cannot make a decision like that and then wonder why our lives is a telenovela. Because all we're dealing with is drama from day in and day out. Jehoram made the decision as king to marry somebody who didn't love his God. He married the daughter of Ahab. And it's in the following chapters that we learn that the daughter of Ahab was a woman by the name of Ataliah. And Ataliah is the same woman who tried to usurp the throne, not only after her husband died, but after her son died, and the way she established her reign as queen of Judah was, was to kill all of her grandchildren. That's the person Jehoram married. And so we need to understand that the decision Jehoram made was to marry a woman that made Ahab his father-in-law, made Jezebel his mother-in-law, and he wondered why he had the problems that he had in his lifetime. And so what does that mean for us today? Well, when it comes to marriage, we need to marry someone who will adhere to the scriptures. Listen to your Bible in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33. In Ephesians chapter 5, and the verse is 33. The apostle Paul says, however... Let each one of you love his wife as himself. And let the wife see that she respects her husband. And so women don't marry a man that doesn't love himself. Because if he doesn't love himself, he's not going to love you. And men don't marry a woman that doesn't respect herself. If she doesn't respect how she walks out the house in the mornings, if she doesn't respect how she runs her mouth, if she doesn't respect what she does for a living, if she doesn't respect herself, then know that she is not going to respect you. That's the standard. And so we learn from Jehoram how not to treat family. But PowerPoint number two is this. We also learn from Jehoram. How not to have relationships. How not to have relationships. We understand that being isolated is something that is condemned in scripture. According to Proverbs chapter 18 verse 1 and 2. So we must have relationships. But we learn in Jehoram how not to have them. One of the things we see in the life of Jehoram is that Jehoram followed the worst possible example. He followed the worst possible example. And we read about that in 2 Chronicles chapter 21, verse 6. Jehoram was the firstborn of Jehoshaphat. And he was raised by one of Judah's good and great kings. Yet this same Jehoram makes a decision and marries Ahab's daughter. So now Jehoram has a decision to make. Do he follow the example of his father who loved God, amassed wealth legally, and also died in peace? Or does he follow the example of his father-in-law Ahab who hated God, amassed wealth illegally, and died in a war that the prophet Micaiah told him not to fight in? Jehoram chose the latter. He says, I'm going to follow my father-in-law instead of follow my father. He followed the worst 
possible example. And it led to his destruction. So what are we supposed to learn from that? Well, when it comes to examples, we must follow the example of Jesus and trustworthy individuals. Listen to your Bible in 1 Peter chapter 2 and the verses 21. In 1 Peter chapter 2 and the verses 21, the Bible reads, For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you. Doing what? Leaving you an example. That you are to follow in his steps. Now keep that in mind as we also take a look at Philippians chapter 4. Verse 8 and 9. In Philippians the chapter is 4. And the verses are 8 and 9. The apostle Paul writes, finally brothers. Whatever is pure. Whatever is lovely. Whatever is commendable. If there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things and what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Practice these things. In other words, follow my example. And if you follow my example in these things, the God of peace will be with you. Jehoram did not do this. But we also learned something else in regards to Jehoram when it comes to relationships. Jehoram burned bridges with nations, allies, family, and friends. He burned bridges. And we read about that in 2 Chronicles chapter 21, verses 8 through 10. He burned bridges with the Edomites. Now understand that the Edomites and the Israelites have had issues for quite some time, dating all the way back to their fathers, Jacob and Esau. They were twin brothers. Jacob is the father of the Israelites. Esau is the father of the Edomites. And ever since Esau sold his birthright for a bowl of soup, and ever since Jacob deceived Isaac and stole Esau's blessing, they have been vinegar, they have been oil and water ever since. That's how they've been. And there's been issues. Even when the Israelites crossed over the Red Sea, before, after they crossed over the Red Sea, it was the Edomites that said, no, we will not grant you passage through our land because we don't like you. Well, it took the work of King David to bring about reconciliation with the Edomite people. And there was peace with the Edomites from the reign of King Saul even to this point in the text. Because the Edomites had the following resolve. For as long as the kings of Judah follow God, they will have no problems with us. But Jehoram turned his back on God. He forsook the Lord. And when Jehoram forsook the Lord, then and only then did the Edomites raise up their own king and rebelled against God the people of Judah. You know, oftentimes we emphasize how standing for truth can ruin relationships. There are so many people, you know, I don't have friends. How come you don't have no friends? Because I love the Lord. Listen, we got to stop blaming Jesus for our lack of friends, okay? <laughs> but there are so many people that do that. You know, because I stand for truth is the reason why I don't have no friends. Jehoram shows us something different. Jehoram shows us how not standing for truth can ruin relationships. He lost allies because he turned his back on God. And the Edomites did not like that. Listen to your Bible as we take a look at Psalm 36, verses 1, 2, and 3. In Psalm 36... Verses 1, 2, and 3, the words of the psalmist are, Transgression speaks to the wicked deep in his heart. 
There is no fear of God before his eyes. For he flatters himself in his own eyes that his iniquity cannot be found out and hated. The words of his mouth are trouble and deceit. He has ceased to act wisely and do good. He plots trouble while on his bed. He sets himself in a way that is not good. He does not reject evil. So my question is, do we as Christians desire to have a relationship with someone like this? Would we as Christians desire to have a relationship with someone like Jehoram in which King Jehoram fits the description in this text? I don't blame the Edomites because Jehoram shows us how not to have relationships. Not only does he show us how not to treat family and how not to have relationships, but PowerPoint number three is this. Jehoram shows us what not to do religiously. He shows us what not to do religiously. Jehoram did evil in the sight of the Lord. The Bible tells us this in 2 Chronicles chapter 21 verse 6. Jehoram did things during his reign that were bad. He did things that were wrong. He did things that were worthless. And he did things that were in vain. Well, as Christians, we must understand that any force, any attitude, or any action that works in opposition to God or is out of harmony with God is evil. Jehoram was out of harmony with God. He worked in opposition against God. Therefore, let us turn away from evil. Let us do good. Let us seek peace. Let us pursue peace. According to 1 Peter chapter 3 and verses 11. Not only that. Jehoram not only forsook the Lord, or rather, not only did he do evil in the sight of the Lord, but Jehoram had forsaken the Lord. The Bible uses that language in 2 Chronicles chapter 21 and the verses 10. To forsake means that Jehoram left God. Jehoram let go of God. Jehoram abandoned God. Well, as Christians, we are not to let go of God. We are not to abandon God. We are not to leave God. We are not to forsake God. But rather, we must build ourselves up in the most holy faith and keep ourselves in the love of God. According to Jude, chapter, uh, Jude verses 20 and 21. Not only did he forsake the Lord, not only did he do evil in the sight of God, but Jehoram embraced idolatry. Not only did he leave God, he replaced God with idols. And we read about that in 2 Chronicles chapter 21, verse 11. Jehoram broke the first three commandments that we read about given by Moses in Deuteronomy 5 and Exodus 20. And not only did he build up these idols and forsake the Lord, but he built altars to these idols. These idols that cannot see, these idols that cannot hear, these idols that cannot talk, these idols that cannot save. And so as Christians, we must not put anything in place of or before our Savior. For if we do, if we put anything before our Savior, if we put anything in place of our Savior, any person, any place, anything, that thing has become our idol. Therefore, let us heed to the words of the Apostle Paul that are given to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and the verses 14, and that is we must flee idolatry. That means not only turn your back on idolatry, but that word flee means run, get as far away from from this foolishness as far as you can and as fast as you can. We must flee idolatry. So we learn what not to do religiously. We're not to embrace idols. 
We're not to forsake the Lord. We're not to do evil in his sight. But also Jehoram did something else. If it wasn't enough for him to do these things, he also led the nation astray. He led Judah astray. It wasn't enough for him to do that. But rather he wanted everybody to do it with him. And we read about this in 2 Chronicles chapter 21 verse 11. The sins and leadership of Jehoram led an entire nation to whoredom and caused them to go astray. And so as Christians, even if we have to stand alone, our pure and sincere devotion must be to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we see that in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, and the verse is 3. Now we may be listening to this message on the day, and we may say, okay, you're saying that Jehoram is an example on how not to live. But I don't really see anything bad about what he did. I, I, I don't see the big deal. I mean, that man, I mean, God says we have free, we have free moral agency. We can do what we want. I mean, I mean, does it really matter how we live? It does matter how we live. So we're going to answer the question, why not to live this way? We are not to live this way because of the judgment it brings from God. We need to understand that however we live, one day we're going to have to stand before a righteous and holy God and give an account for the things that we have done in this body. Notice Elijah the prophet. We talked about him last week, you know that troubler of Israel? He prophesied to Ahab. He prophesied to Ahab's son, Ahaziah. And then Ahaziah had a brother whose also name was Jehoram, which is also known as Joram. He prophesied to him too. Elijah was a prophet in Israel, sent to the people of Israel. But when he heard about the sins of King Jeho Jehoram of Judah, Elijah felt compelled to send this king a letter. And we read this letter in 2 Chronicles chapter 21, verses 12 through 15. Listen to what the Bible says. 2 Chronicles chapter 21, verses 12 through 15. The Bible reads, And a letter came to him from Elijah the prophet, saying, Thus says the Lord, the God of David your father, because you have not walked in the ways of Jehoshaphat your father, or in the ways of Asa, king of Judah, but have walked in the way of the kings of Israel and have enticed Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem into whoredom as the house of Ahab led Israel into whoredom. And also you have killed your brothers and your father's house who were better than yourself. Behold, the Lord will bring a great plague on your people, your children, your wives, and all your possessions. And you yourself will have a severe sickness with the disease of your bowels until your bowels come out because of the disease day by day. Listen to what God did to Jehoram because of his sins. Jehoram died poor because of his disobedience. Second Chronicles chapter 21, verses 16 and 17. Jehoram died lonely because of his disobedience. Also verses 16 and 17. Jehoram died from an incurable disease because of his disobedience. Verse 18. He died in agony because of his disobedience. Verse 19. He died without honor because of his disobedience. Verse 19. He died without anyone mourning because of his disobedience, according to verse 20. The Bible says when he died, no one had any regrets. You know, usually when people die, 
folks say, oh, man, you know, I wish I had done X, Y, and Z while they were still alive. Jehoram died, and they was like, good, he's gone. No one wants to die that way. And then also, Jehoram was buried, but not with the family, but because of his disobedience. Even wicked kings were allowed the privilege of being buried in the royal graveyard, not Jehoram. The Bible says he was so wicked, they didn't light any fire for him. They didn't give him a state funeral. People were glad he was gone, and they just threw him in the ground. He was not buried with the other kings of Judah. He was not buried with his family. When God casts judgment on a man, God don't play. So where do you stand? Where do you stand on this morning? When we read 2 Chronicles chapter 21, don't you know that out of all of these verses speaking about Jehoram, there is a verse of encouragement in this text that should all give us encouragement on today. And it was in the scriptural text, 2 Chronicles chapter 21, look at verse number 7. The Bible says, yet the Lord was not willing to destroy the house of David. Because of the covenant that he had made with David. And since he had promised to give a light to him and to his sons forever. Don't you know that God uses similar language in the New Testament? When we take a look at 2 Peter chapter 3 and the verses 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness. But is long suffering to us word, not willing that any of us should perish, but that we all come to repentance. If God was not willing to destroy Jehoram and the house of David because of a covenant that he made with a man. How much more is God unwilling to destroy you on today because of the love that he has for his only begotten son, Jesus Christ? That means the reason why we are here today is because God is not willing that you should perish. But that does not give us the right to continue in the sins of Jehoram. Don't think that because you still have breath in your body and blood in your veins that God is pleased with how you treat your family. Don't think that because you're still alive that God is pleased with how you have relationships. Don't think that God is pleased with what you do religiously because you haven't died yet. The Bible tells us we all going to have to press a dying pillow. It is appointed unto men once to die and after this to judgment according to Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27. That means we have an opportunity right here, right now to do what Jehoram never did. And you want to know how I know he didn't do it? Because the Bible tells us that he didn't. Think about that for a moment. When you look at the book of Kings and the book of Chronicles, what are the difference between the two, two books? They both chronicle the kings. In the book of First and Second Kings, it chronicled the kings of Israel and Judah. Now, when we read about the kings of Judah in First and Second Kings, it's usually not in the best light. I mean, if they did some good things, we learn about them. If they did some evil things, we learn about it. But we never hear about repentance if they did bad things in the book of First and Second Kings. Why? Because the author is committed to talking about the kings of Israel and the kings of Judah. 
It's only when we read the book of First and Second Chronicles that we have a different perspective of the kings of Judah as to whether they did good things or bad things. When you read about King Manasseh, King Manasseh of Judah, when you read about him in First and Second Kings, you will say this man was the devil incarnate. There is no way a man like that is on his way to heaven. But then when you read about just the kings of Judah in 1st and 2nd Chronicles, it tells us that this man who burned his children on an altar to an idol, to an idol God, who forsook the Lord, who killed God's prophets, repented and used the rest of his life to make things right with God. So that means that if God can save a person like Manasseh, he can save anybody. So that means the thing about First and Second Chronicles is that it put the kings of Judah in the best possible light. The book of Second Chronicles has nothing good to say about Jehoram. And that was a kind representation of who this man was. In other words, Ezra was holding back and yet has nothing nice to say about this man. You have an opportunity to do what Jehoram never did, and that's repent. This is your time. This is your moment. We're about to sing a song. God is calling the prodigal. Have you been wastefully extravagant with the way you've been living? How you've been treating your family? How you've been disobeying God? Have you forsaken him? Have you turned your backs on him? Have you let go of God? Have you done evil in his sight? Have you been worshiping in religious era? Have you been mistreating your family? Have you been burning bridges? Have you been Jehoram in the 21st century? This is your opportunity to make things right with him. Confess it. Repent it. Give it up. Ask God to forgive you. And God will forgive you. You know why? Because he's not willing that you should perish. But maybe you're not a Christian. You need to become one. You need to become one. Because if you do not have a relationship with God. You have opened the door. To be just as bad. As Jehoram's wife Ataliah. That you have no standard. That there is no boundary, there is no line you will not cross. Because if we do not have God as our moral compass, guiding our conscience, we would do all kinds of evil. It's time for you to say, I'm going to stop doing things my way. I'm going to start doing things God's way. You've heard his word on this morning. You need to believe what you have heard. That Jesus died for you. That you need to have a devotion to him. Give up sin. That's called repentance. Don't be like Jehoram anymore. Confess Christ to be the son of the living God according to Matthew 10, 32. Have your sins washed away in the watery grave of baptism. The Bible tells us that God would do this for us according to Acts 2, 38. He'll make you a new creature in Christ Jesus. What kind of creature? A creature that will follow the example of Jesus in treatment to family, when it comes to relationships, and when it comes to obeying God Almighty. God stands ready this morning to add you to his church, the only church you could read about in scripture, and that church is the Church of Christ. Jesus said he was going to build that church in Matthew 16, 18. He actually built that church according to Acts chapter 2. Purchased that church with his very own blood according to Acts chapter 20 verse, 20 verse 28. And he adds to save to it according to Acts chapter 2 verse 47. Why not become a member of a going church for a coming Lord which does all that God authorizes? Come back home. Get into his house. This morning, right here, right now, while together we stand and sing the song that has been selected.